48 BC. After plunging his country into civil war, Julius Caesar faces off against his political rival and former son-in-law, Pompey the Great. This battle will influence whether Rome remains a republic or Caesar becomes its dictator. You start them halfway through that hill. Today, four university graduates will pit their wits against the tactical genius of Caesar. Take out these people flank you on the right-hand side. Can four of Britain's most highly educated elite outsmart one of the greatest military leaders in history? This is Time Commanders. With Eddie Mayer in our 21st Century Battle Command Center are a team of graduates from Nottingham University. Ollie Menel, age 22, rank general. Ruth Wilson, age 21, rank general. Tristan Cowell, age 22, rank lieutenant. Becky Ansell, age 21, rank lieutenant. Now, how do you all know each other? We all went to university together in Nottingham. So you know everything about each other? Uh, Quite a lot. We like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, you enjoy horse riding, am I right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Could your knowledge of horses be useful in this battle, do you think? Um, I hope so. I hope it could come useful with the cavalry element of it. I hope that, uh, I don't know, maybe I can pass on a few pearls of wisdom to these guys. Who's got the... <laughs> History degree. Why are you laughing? Okay. I've so there's one history degree between four yeah. after a flying start. It's modern history and not really warfare history, so probably not that helpful. Yeah. <laughs> I studied Roman history in my degree, though, Greek and Roman history, because I did classics. So. And how much of it do you remember? Uh, not very much, I have to say. <laughs> Ollie, what about you? Do you have uh, any military experience? I was in the officer training corps at university for a couple of years. So no military experience? Not at all, no. <laughs> <laughs> I could play around with wooden, wooden guns and stuff, but that's about it. Well, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I'm going into investment banking. That's, that's what I'm going to do. OK, let's make a note. Make money. Banker. <laughs> you are a general. Yes, I am. And Ruth, you're a general. Yeah, I am. How was that decided? Oh, well, I fancied being a general, and I'd said Ruth, and uh, I, did I, I did really. I said, <laughs> said, but Becky didn't. Becky wasn't too bothered, and we decided to do boy girl, boy girl, and so it was either me or Tristan, and we had a bit of a fight out back, and I came out on top. So Tristan and Becky, you let them walk all over you. No, not really. you they, won't, they won't be walking all over us today. <laughs> well, you're going to have to take orders, you know that. You're going yeah, to have to do as you're told. No, I know. Are you happy to do that? Yeah, I will take orders, but if I, if I think that there's a better way of doing it, I will state that. Polly, I understand you believe that men are better at strategic thinking than women, is that right? Well, this is the couple of known facts, really, in life, isn't it? Women, women are very good parkers because of like, the whole spatial awareness thing. And, um, and, then, and the other thing is that men are just generally better with thinking ahead, a bit of strategy here and there, so... Bit of a, uh, yeah. got no rationality, though. <laughs> Completely okay. rational beings. <laughs> All right. Before we do anything else, let's meet the two historians who are experts in all this. They know everything there is to know about history. Monitoring the team are two military experts. Dr. Eric Nussbacher, Senior Lecturer in War Studies, Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst. Mike Lowes, Combat and Weapons Historian. They can't be stumped, and they'll be watching your every move. And then later, they're going to come down and uh, tear your battle plan to pieces. Okay. I'm going to give you a few more clues now. The first thing you need to do is grab hold of those clipboards, and in the name of humanity, take as many notes as you can, because every note you take could prove crucial in the battle. All right, a little more information about the battle you're going to fight. It's the Battle of Pharsalus. You're going to be in charge of Pompey fighting Caesar. Have a look at this. The year is 48 BC. The place is Pharsalus in northern Greece. Civil war rages between two Roman leaders. 
On one side, Pompey the Great, commander of the Roman forces loyal to the Senate. On the other side, the maverick leader Julius Caesar and 20,000 loyal soldiers. For four centuries, the Roman Republic had thrived and expanded through warfare. It now controlled the Mediterranean, North Africa, and much of Europe. Julius Caesar, the governor of Gaul, had played a major part in that expansion. So had Rome's legionary cohorts, who had become experienced and efficient fighters in the process. Caesar's legions were particularly battle-hardened and fanatically loyal to the young leader. But Caesar's success created jealous enemies amongst Roman senators who feared his ambition and popularity. Among his greatest rivals was the celebrated Roman general Pompey the Great. In 50 BC, Caesar's command in Gaul came to an end and he was ordered to surrender his army. He refused. Instead, he mustered his troops and crossed the Rubicon River into Italy. It was an act of war. Pompey and the majority of the senators fled eastward to Greece. Within two months, Caesar and his legions had gained control of Italy. But the civil war wasn't over. In Greece, Pompey gathered a force of 45,000 new recruits, a mix of inexperienced legionaries and eastern cavalry. Needing to defeat Pompey in order to win the civil war, Caesar followed his enemy to Greece. The two armies meet on August the 9th, 48 BC, near the town of Pharsalus. Pompey is 58 years old with an excellent military record, but he hasn't commanded an army in battle for 13 years. Aggressive senators in Pompey's camp have pressured him into fighting, knowing they have the advantage of numbers and high ground. Caesar, on the other hand, is in his early 50s and at the peak of his ability. He's a brilliant war tactician whose army is experienced, loyal, and battle-seasoned. Both leaders know each other's weapons, training, and tactics. The only variable is each side's battle plan. If Pompey's army is victorious, the rebellion will be crushed, the civil war over, and the republic restored. If Caesar wins, the greatest empire on earth could fall under the control of a single man. The stakes are high. Battle is imminent. All right. All you have to do is, as Pompey, take on one of the most successful generals in the history of history and win. Any thoughts? Easy. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> what did you glean from that? Um. That Caesar's got the more... Um, Sort of experienced and loyal well soldiers. Trained. Um, but, but you've got more numbers. We've, we've got more numbers, yeah. yeah. Um, Is that it? But he's aggressive, quite aggressive. Oh, uh, we've got strong cavalry as well, so get them, get those horses in action. Yeah, Tristan. There's a lot, a lot of confidence on their side that um, maybe we could exploit. Pompey's got a big army. Pompey has has put together all kinds of nif naf and bobtail and stuffed them all into a big sack to make each of his legions. And Pompey's got big legions, but they're soft. It's like Caesar's going out there with a bunch of bricks, and Pompey's going out there with a bunch of big marshmallows. Let's have a look at where the battle's going to take place. Have a look at this. dotted with forest, Pompey's army is positioned above the battlefield. The high ground slopes down to a river and the open plain. Caesar's small force is gathered at the far side on flat ground. The river guards one flank of his army. Because the team is up against a smaller but much more experienced force, they need to identify and harness any advantage this terrain offers. It's absolutely critical that they spot the significance of the river. They need the river to protect their flanks. They must line up in the right place. Tell me what you can see. What does this show you? Um, well, we've got, it's, it's like quite like a mountainous area, I guess. So we've got this bit here, which, which I presume is, is high up, sloping down that way. 
Um, is that right? You're looking at me like I'm going to help. I'm just an innocent bystander. <laughs> surely, surely both these are peaks, aren't they? And they're both run down that way because that shows the gradient going down. They are peaks, and don't call me Shirley. Right. Okay. <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, we've got high points. High points over here. Are obviously a river here as well. What what use might the river be, or what hindrance might it be? Well, it just means you can't do like like if, you, if we're going this way, we can't do like a right flank really and go around the back that way. Ollie's grasped one possible use of the river. It prevents flanking. But he's missed its most important use, that if it prohibits flanking, it's ideal for flank protection. It just all depends on where troops are and everything. But, yeah, tricky area. What about vegetation? Can you see that? <laughs> what, are you hungry? Or... <laughs> <laughs> just like trees, like if it's densely forest area, or, you know, that would, might hamper us as well. OK, OK. I presume these are the forest areas, yeah. and so there's quite a dense part over there. It's all open space there. The team has identified key geographic features, but not their tactical uses. With an opponent as formidable as Caesar on the other side of the battlefield, they can't afford to lose advantage to oversight. Now that the team knows the main features of the battlefield, they can find out about Pompey's army and the forces they are commanding in battle. The most important facts for the lieutenants to identify are the units they control, and that to maximize their forces, they must maintain troop formation. I'm not hearing much information coming back yet. Generals, you need to know what's going on. This is your, this is your moment. Becky, we'll start with you, because we'll do it we'll at the back first. Becky has control of troops higher up the hill. Most of the heavy infantry fighters and the team slingers. Poppy's troops may be crap, but at least they're, they're fresh crap. They're relatively fresh, yeah. yes. OK, we've got on the left, furthest left here, these are the legionary cohorts. They've got spears and shields. Can you see between the two blocks, those are the Roman generals? OK, what are the two in the middle that you've got? OK, the two, in the, the two here, the two blocks to the, to the direct right of the generals, they're legionary cohorts as well. What weapons are they? The same. Spears and shields are OK. We get a very good um, image of the pillar here. Yeah. It was a wonderful weapon. It would punch through the shield. The spike's long enough. Hopefully, it would actually get the man, the, 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 the other side of the shield. But whatever, it's stuck in the shield and has disabled the shield. And the soft iron either bent or they sometimes here had riveted on one side, but just a wooden peg on the other, so it would actually break on impact. Because the thing with any, any missile weapon, you don't want the enemy to be able to throw it back to throw you. Back at you, right. See to the right-hand side? Yeah. You've got three blocks of legionary cohorts again. OK. OK, directly in front of them, yeah. you've got slingers. OK, and then by the enemy, sort of to the left of the enemy, you can see them in the far distance. You've got scouts, which are like the lookout to see what the enemy are doing. OK. What are those ours? They're ours. Right, OK. Tristan, I'm in charge of the, uh, the front set of the troops. Tristan commands troops lower down the hill, the archers, the massive eastern cavalry and two cohorts. While the lieutenants assess their troops, Ollie and Ruth need to establish who controls which part of the army. This is essential for orders to be given clearly when the fighting starts. Far right in the front, cavalry. Two blocks of cavalry, moving left again, a set of legionary cohorts, the little group just behind. Yeah. And then just in front of those, uh, we've got archers. Next one across, cavalry. Yeah. Next one across again, cavalry. Yeah. Next one across, archers right at the front. Legionary cohorts behind them. And what's and that little group right at the front? The little group right at the front is, is a group of generals. OK. All right, you happy? Yeah. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Those are all your troops. OK, lieutenants, come back up. What information did you glean down there that's going to be useful to the generals in battle? Um, do you know which, one, which, which ones are our, uh, are our strongest? Detailed scouting is proving to be a weakness. The team has missed some key clues about the strengths of their various units and how best to use the troops. The team's cohorts are undisciplined, but if well commanded, are a formidable fighting force. Only a few months earlier, the same cohorts had already defeated Caesar in a battle at Dyrrhachium. Pompey's cavalry can be used offensively. At the same battle, it inflicted heavy losses on Caesar's cohorts. The team's archers and slingers are ideal for use early in the battle, but they need to be protected against direct attack. Without this information, the team will struggle to position their troops properly on the battlefield. Fortunately, they have one more chance to make the grade in reconnaissance. I am going to give you a little more help. Okay. 
with some information about key troops, okay. which may prove useful for you. Have a look at your legions. Legionary cohort, inexperienced but numerous. Vulnerable if formation not maintained. Armed with javelin or sword. What are you learning? Inexperienced. They've got a lot of. They've got a lot of arms. They've got swords. They can go heavy javelins. Yeah. Yeah, they're for That's frontal fair. battle, like just do. Yeah. Heavy javelins. So I take it that means they've got one one chuck as well <laughs> before they go back before they go to the sword. So you might well have to uh, sacrifice them somewhere along the line. Eastern cavalry, numerous, effective against infantry flanks, good on open ground, inexperienced, poor against front line. Not battle seasoned. Are you worried about that weakness? Poor against front line. Um, well, no, because we weren't going to send. I don't no. think. I don't think we're planning on sending them in first uh, anyway. Um, I think they'd, they'd, they'd be the supports coming coming through behind the uh, whoever we're Sentries. sending first. The graduates have finally managed to interpret the best use of one of their troops, that cavalry should be used to support infantry, and that they move quickly on the battlefield. If they're on horses, you're going to be able to move them bigger distances than uh, ground troops on foot. The big difference between Roman cavalry and these um, Eastern cavalry is that Eastern cavalry are capable of delivering a shock charge. These people are capable of getting up to uh, perhaps even a hand gallop and hitting an enemy force at a good trot or a hand gallop. They can go flat out gallop. I mean, there's no danger in that. They can go flat out gallop and whack them. OK, that's as much as you're going to find out, I expect, about your own troops. Anything else you'd like to know before you start battle? What's going on with the enemy? Yeah. What, what's you that? see, I thought yeah. that might be something you'd like to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Generals, I want you to send your brightest and best lieutenant <laughs> uh, down to one of the technicians here to do a little scouting, find out as much as you can about the enemy. This is a critical oh, moment. Okay, critical okay, moment. Tr okay, Tristan, go and do it, mate. <laughs> right, well, vote of confidence. Good luck. For the next few minutes, the team can use their scouts to search the enemy ranks and gather information about Caesar's army. Will they identify that Caesar's left flank is vulnerable and that he's using the river for protection? Spotting this will give the team a big advantage in battle. Missing it could have dire consequences. Out on the open plain, the team's scouts are susceptible to attack. To complete the recce and return safely to the hilltop, they must approach Caesar's army with extreme caution. Right then, furthest left, the cavalry. First, furthest left. Behind them, uh, light infantry. Um, the little little crowd at the back is their set of generals. One of the things that Julius Caesar, wearing his red general's cloak, can do from that position is he has a good view of the battlefield. And as Pompey orders himself on the field, Caesar is able to watch him doing it. Next to the generals, we've got um, legionary cohorts. The first four are working their way, your way across are all legionary cohorts. So one, two, uh, yeah, okay. One, two, three, four. Caesar has his worst, weakest legions on his left, down by the river, because if they're down by the river, they can't be flanked on the left. And on the right, the tenth, his the favorite. Tenth. His, his boys, the ones he knows will fight. The tenth legion have been with Julius Caesar for a very long time. He knows them, they know him. And Julius Caesar knows that when they go into battle, the tenth will look after itself. So all, all that front section are all legionary cohorts. Okay. Caesar's cohorts are so hard and disciplined that they can hold off cavalry attacks. They're excellent at maintaining their formation and regrouping after battle. But these cohorts are battle-weary and the weakest part of Caesar's army. Before the scouts have a chance to find this out, Caesar makes a surprise attack. They're moving. They're armed with long spears. You're not worried about your scouts at all, are you? Yeah, we should move our scouts. We've got uh, Caesar's army on the move now. They're coming out to attack their scouts, which they'd left very far forward. Oh, they've got our scouts. That doesn't look good, does it? No. Absolutely got the initiative of surprise. That really took them on the hop. 
The scouting party is wiped out. The attack prevents the team from finding out about Caesar's compromised flank, and it's given them a taste of what's coming. Okay, do you want to all come back up? With Caesar on the offensive, the team must now formulate a battle plan. They have two basic options. To fight an offensive battle, concentrating on Caesar's weak left flank, or to fight defensively and use their numbers to advantage. What are you going to do? What's your battle plan? OK. Well, we've got, we've got the advantage of having archers. They haven't got any like that, so we need to utilise them. And then... Um, we need the legions at the front because they've got the most uh, hardware, really, haven't they? So basically, these, we, need, we, need to bring, we need to bring these legions into more of a, like a, a, a position up here. Yeah. And I think maybe like if we, if we pulled our, our horses so Cavalry they, they can maybe come around and, and then swoop through once the, the main archers. attack's over. And then basically have the archers, the archers? archers on top of a hill firing yeah. down. So whether it's over here or over there. Kristen? You can see what they're doing with their cavalry. They just, they've got defensive points either side, haven't they? Because they've got the river to that side. Yeah. Mm. Tristan has correctly identified the defensive potential of the river, an insight that should give the team a clue about how best to fight this battle. For Caesar, the key bit of the battle is the right. That's good for him. It's where the commander traditionally was in classical warfare, towards the front on the right. And what it means for Pompey is that Pompey has got to put his main strength and position himself as the commander on his left, the side away from the river. Both Caesar and Pompey want to wrap around the landward side of the enemy. Basically, we've got to, th we've got to think about um, whenever we're going to, if we're going to attack something with there, we want to have more numbers than they do. So we're not going to send one on one because they're more experienced. So we want to be sending three onto one or whatever. Concentrating strength against enemy weakness. I like that. Yeah. What Ollie is pointing out is that they can try to achieve a local advantage. Overall, they have a numerical advantage, but really you want, in classical military theory, you want a three to one advantage uh, to defend. You want a six to one advantage to attack, but all it has to be is a local advantage. If they're coming this way to attack us, they're gonna be coming uphill, and we're gonna be going downhill, and yeah. that is better to be going downhill. Yeah, let's get those moved. You want the battle to come to you? Are you waiting to be attacked? Um, well, that would be better, because we've got a more defensive position. There's no point in giving this up. So you're going to wait to be attacked? Yeah, I think we should. What do you think? What we could do is... We're on top of a hill. They've got to run up a hill. It's always better to be going down. One of the most interesting things about this is that it is Roman versus Roman. You've got legionary forces against legionary forces, and it's absolutely a poker game. Who's going to lose their nerve first and lose the initiative? Because both forces work better if they're holding ground. If we look at the fact that this is like a no-go, a no-go zone, really. We're not going to come past the river, I don't think. Let's, let's start off by putting the archers into, into a position where they can put some good fire down, so like around this kind of area here, or maybe on top of this bit, on top of I've, this hill I here. I think on top of the hill. So if we, if we have archers there, and and legions. And, uh, if we have if we have le we have legions in front of them. So once they once they've gone in, they then, they, then they can yeah. they can pile in afterwards, and um, and like support it. I think every whatever attack we're going to do, if we have it supported by cavalry, so once yeah. that main fight is over, they come in around the back. The bad boys can come in. One of the interesting things is the way they've um, lined them up there. They've used the blocks longitudinally, which actually is quite important because it's showing that Pompey did actually have that extra depth. He had more them, right. so he could put more depth into. He was going ten deep with his cohorts. Just tell us once more what the plan is. OK, the plan is um, we've got two, two main areas of defence. Uh, th this is the, this is the uh, east side massive and this is the west side. And uh, basically we're going to wait for them to come to us and, uh, and we're going to have the archers on the hill do what they can and then take... take, take send in the heavy boys. Take in the heavy, yeah. the heavy boys okay. and follow, the follow them by the back with the uh, cavalry. He's going to do the, the sword and shield. He's going to use his infantry to hold Caesar in place, and then wham, out of nowhere is gonna come that massive cavalry, fix and strike. Great plan, but can they wait? One of the key things they're gonna to have to remember in this battle is initiative. The trick now is to come down off that hill in good order and set up in good order. Absolutely, because if they actually start playing with deployments, they just might get a little bit out of order. These will come and hit them. If Caesar sees Pompey coming down in poor order, then it's an opportunity for Caesar. 
Yeah, take two of the cavalry. Okay, and, over. and Becky. Yeah. At the same time, if you want to start, if you want to start taking the um, your infantry guys over to the right hand side. Yeah, can we take the infantry to the right? The original battle plan entailed staying on the highest ground, but deployment is taking Pompey's blue army further down the hill. Has Ollie hatched a new plan, or just forgotten the old one? Okay, and Tristan, at the same time, if you take your, if you take your archers over there as well, because they'll take longer to get there. Yeah. Ollie has taken over as supreme leader of the forces. Ruth has been made to take a back seat in decision making. And the lieutenants are struggling to get Ollie to understand which troops they control. Becky? Yeah. Can we see what. See your back, you see your back five here? Yeah. If you, bring, if, you're, if, if you bring them down to basically where Tristan's group are now, okay. and that's going to be your right hand can side. Bring the five, the group of five, five down, down to meet the, uh, Tristan's legion who's down the front. With Ollie busy micromanaging his troops, Caesar grabs the initiative. His contempt for Pompey was widely known, and it appears he's taken the same dislike to Ollie. Somebody's moving there. Oh. And they look like Caesarian forces to me. Let's have a quick look over here. Caesar's moving forward. Oh, yeah. The Caesarian forces are marching. Caesar's All forcing the In very good order. In very good order. They're closing the gap. Caesar's forcing the issue. The thing that you've always got to keep in mind is that whoever seizes the initiative is going to win this one. Absolutely. Can you turn right and have a look at the enemy? Yeah. Right. Oh, they're coming oh. forward, aren't they? They're coming forward, aren't they? Right, go on. Just, yeah. just, zoom, just go up, can you? They're moving forward. Can you go up from a... So they're, atta they're attacking us, right, okay. With the greatest general in history looking to pick a fight, the team's calmness reflects either nerves of steel or deep denial. Are you in position yet? Um, no, we're not. I, I, don't, think, I don't think we're going to have time to move the men on foot across what? there. Well, well, okay, right. Who are those people moving now? On, on, That's on me. The left? I'm moving in front of the cavalry because okay, I've just got Okay, and have the cavalry. cavalry. So if you get them, Tristan, your two on the left are Can staying still, okay? Yeah. Get That's them, move them over to the left hand side. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't, at the moment, I can't yeah. tell if they're going to left right, flank or left. whatever flank. Caesar's advance reveals the discipline of his army. They never lose formation. But Pompey's army is another story entirely. Right, so they're spreading out. They're going to sacrifice their depth. They're going to try and plug these gaps by, by sacrificing their depth. And I think they're going to get hit very hard. Well, they're, 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 trying, gonna, they're, they're trying to hold ground. While Ollie parades his men around the hilltop, Caesar pauses to rest his army. From the battlefield, he watches the chaos on the hill. As the team gives up more of the high ground, Caesar is convinced that the time is ripe for battle. Oh, guys, we're completely exposed on the far left-hand side. There's nothing, there's no defense. The shambolic deployment gives Caesar a bold idea. Seeing how spread out the team's army is, Caesar leaves the protection of the river to take his chances hitting Pompey head on. The move exposes his weak left flank, but Caesar is banking on the team not being sharp enough to execute a flanking maneuver. And Caesar is leaving the river. Can they fight without anchoring their left flank on the river? Caesar today has calculated um, that he dare do that. That's right. But actually, he has made himself vulnerable now. And it's a tremendous opportunity it's for the big, team. Big, big gamble by today's Caesar. Yeah, it is an opportunity for the team. Will the team recognize that Caesar's new position provides them with a brief but critical window of opportunity, the chance to outflank the Red Army on its weakest side? They're coming. Look, we've got... Oh, God, OK. OK. Can, can everyone be on, like, attack formation? For both leaders, this is end game of that civil war. It's, it, 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 it's a football game of a battle. It's the two teams are drawn up each side, and who wins this carries off the cup. That's right. Caesar advances quickly with a plan of attack in mind. He divides his front line into three distinct units, while a strong reserve falls back. As the Red Legions charge forward, Ollie gives his first battle command. I want, it, I want to. I want the cavalry. To, I want the cavalry to come around and take out those people flanking on the right-hand side. Tristan, you can move these cavalry over here. Ollie charges his horses into a front line of infantry. It's an order that breaks the team's defensive position and misuses a key troop, which is weak against infantry. 
Is this just a nervous reaction to Caesar's aggression, or have the generals forgotten everything learned in the wreckage? Becky? Yeah. Oh, on the left-hand side, I want you to send cavalry and infantry. Infantry in first, Becky, on the left-hand side. Cavalry. Can we bring it, like, infantry on the left-hand side? He does cavalry. Ollie attempts a flanking manoeuvre on the left side, but he's having difficulty giving orders. He's still not sure who controls the troops, and it's resulting in mayhem on the battlefield. Are the archers firing onto the, uh, these cavalry? Are the archers firing? Oh, my goodness. Is it happening? Right. No, 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 watch this. That's a whole legion all strung out across the field, yeah. behind another legion all strung out. Look what they've got behind, hidden behind their legions, and that they're now bringing forward. Oh, they're archers. Oh, they're bringing them forward. Oh, well, that's bringing sensible. Bringing their archers forward. That's so sensible. That's sensible. That's because they're not going to shoot. They're not going to shoot over them. Shoot their own men. No, no. Oh, maybe they are. Oh, well, they can get over. If this is the front rank, they can get over it. But oh, 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 dear, it's dodgy. Oh, dear. With Caesar's weakest cohorts carving through the team's cavalry on the right, he gets down to work with his hardest units. Caesar hits the Blue Army on two further fronts. He sends an infantry charge into the middle of the team's front line. Moments later, a second attack is launched with javelins. Before infantry starts hacking into infantry. We're going to be stuck here, Ollie. Ollie, these guys are here. So again? There's one infantry to all of that, so we need, these guys are going to die out here. Where Caesar's engaging Pompey, he's pretty much engaging on equal terms, equal numbers. And these masses are out here being idle. Tristan, Wait, let's, let's, let's get all it out. those people on the left-hand side, I said needed to come back forward towards the, the left-hand side of the battle, but you didn't do that because like, they're still up there. So that means like they've got people on the left-hand side coming, so everyone that's on the left needs to come into the battle yeah, area. Realizing that they've spread their forces too thinly, Ollie tries to get the troops from the far hill back into the battle. But they'll need time to cover the large distance between them and the fighting. Can you tell me exactly who everybody is now on the left hand side? Yeah. We should have cavalry there. Set of, set of archers. Do you know what everyone is? Is that what you yeah. want to yeah, sort out? That's what, Ollie, Ollie, we need to. Yeah. Archers and then legionary cohorts are the two rows there. While the generals try to get a grip on the battle, the troops on the field get on with the job. They're holding their own against Caesar's forces. But the generals could make their troops' lives easier, and possibly longer, by committing some of their vast reserves to battle. Come on. OK, Becky, you're sending in those infantry into the main battle. There's a block, I don't know if you can Becky. see, but I'm going to bring them in to close in on the enemy. No, bring those three in the middle into the front of the battle. On the top right, because we're, we're like that. The enemy are there, and we're there. We can surround them. Becky's classics degree may be paying off. She thinks they should try to wrap around Caesar's army. The lieutenants were wonderfully quiet during the setting up, and then as soon as battle was engaged, everybody had an opinion. Everybody had an opinion, that's right. <laughs> you're, you're just listening to what you're saying. I know, I'm talking about something different, though. No, but that's, that, that's why it's not working, because you've got to, like, all tune in. While Ollie reprimands his lieutenant, Caesar strikes again. He starts a fourth battle by attempting to flank the front line. Nearby, a unit of the team's cavalry stands idle, watching the massacre. The team's command structure is so top-heavy that the lieutenants are unable to mobilize their troops without orders from Ollie. Look, here we have Pompey's forces being routed by these fellows. These fellows have been allowed to rout them. Cavalry Pompey's stop cavalry that. are wasted over there. Yeah. That's nonsense. In spite of poor leadership, the Blue Army troops are putting up a good fight. They're holding ground and their formation. But back in the control room, the lieutenants have started a quiet mutiny. How do you think the generals are doing? Not very well. I'm we're running the battle, I'm running the battle. They don't know what's going on. The lieutenants say they're running the battle. <laughs> what they must do now, if they're going to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, is they're going to have to concentrate their strength. We're surrounded on the front line. Need to move some men or some right, cavalry. Right, Becky. Can you see the people in the very middle of the uh, in the very here, middle of the battle? Here, on the left hand side. Yeah. Here, Stop. yeah. Back a bit. Right. I want you to join them into the battle on the on, on the right hand side. The danger is this. Now they are going to start trying to commit more and more forces to try to achieve local superiority against Caesar's forces. 
Will they still keep a tactical reserve to decide at the critical moment of the battle? Or are they going to put everybody in at this point and potentially have nothing left in their pockets if it all goes wrong? Is that all our support at the back? Uh, is that all ours there that you're controlling? Yeah. yeah. Bring everybody into the main area of the battle. Yeah, gotta stop moving them across, yeah. We need okay. to send the cavalry from the left over to the right. Yeah. The team is so focused on fighting these small battles on the front line that they lose sight of the big picture. Caesar's got the upper hand, and with his son-in-law's army starting to falter, he commits his finest fighting force, the 10th Legion. In response, the young generals send cavalry, one cohort, and slingers to certain death against Caesar's ferocious 10th Legion. Look over here. Look at that. Yeah. What are those cavalry doing? Yeah. They're going to get involved, pinned down in a fight with infantry. Whereas what they should be doing is using their mobility to inhibit and steer movement. That's right. These guys are all forming a massive long line. We're along wasting here. energy though. We're getting them to walk across. Well, no, just do it anyway. Okay. Well, right, we're getting encircled yeah. by these guys. The team's forces on the right flank are in trouble. Caesar's men have chased off the last of the team's cavalry and stopped to regroup before slamming back into the flagging blue forces. Moments later, Caesar's reserves unleash themselves, intent on the mass destruction of Pompey's right flank. Remember that Ollie identified his desire to achieve local superiority. And look over here, we have Caesar achieving local superiority, legion, 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 yep. against two, three to two against Pompey there. In the middle of the battlefield, Pompey's blue army is bravely fighting a losing battle. Their only hope of reinforcement is the arrival of troops from the far hill. But Caesar still has reserves of his own much closer to the fighting, which could strike at any time. As the troops from the far hill approach the fighting, they spy a unit of Caesar's cavalry and prepare to attack. But the red cavalry decides to retreat, leaving one of Caesar's infantry troops to attack. Right, Tristan. Who are the people on the left doing nothing? Who have like cav on some generals. cavalry and archers? Well, can you bring them? Can you bring the cavalry into the into the people getting slaughtered in the middle? You're losing more and more men. Tristan. We need to bring in the cavalry. Cavalry into them now. Yeah. Yeah. Bring the cavalry on the hill into the battle in the middle. The cavalry are up on the hill for a good reason. They're staying out of the battle and close to the protection of the forest, and they're not the only ones with that idea. Oh look. Oh, my lord. And they've got a whole bunch of troops sitting around the forest. Sitting around there having a picnic, much. yeah. So who have we got in the forest? Pompey has got a lot of archers hidden in the woods, not participating, not in, participating in the battle. Right, Tristan, the cavalry on the left-hand side of the map, which you're controlling, yeah? Yeah. Bring them into the main area of the battle. We can't actually control those cavalry, because they're, uh, they're routing, because uh, they've been a little bit scared. The team's archers have fled the carnage on the battlefield and are hiding in the forest with the cavalry and a cohort unit. They're staying put until it's safe to come out, or Caesar goes away. You can't control them because they're scared? No, no, yeah. I tried to move them across, and now I can't. <laughs> really? Yeah. They're just staying there? Can you, like, feed them some hay or something? They're just, they're just running all over the place. Can they, can you... <laughs> they were in combat, and now they've run away. Yeah. <laughs> cavalry doing a cavalry yeah, thing. Oh, well, that's right. <laughs> Running off the rate of notes. Even as their men lie dying on the battlefield, the generals put on a brave face. Are these the kind of losses you anticipated? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, you have yeah. to you win some, you lose, lose some. Don't you? <laughs> lose some on men to get to get to victory. And now they're using their cavalry on cavalry in single combat. There is Roman cavalry. Look at that. They've got Roman cavalry, legionary cavalry, who are seeking single combat with other cavalrymen, seeking glory. No use to anybody. What the hell are those Roman cavalry for anyway? Sons of noblemen trying to make a military reputation in the field, Absolutely. not doing very much good. Classic. Right, okay, our archers are running away because of the generals are after them. We need to get... Tristan, can you send any men over to the right-hand side? Because we're getting slaughtered. 
<laughs> but not inevitable. <laughs> what have we got here? We've got a lot of, this is a lot of dead people, is it? Oh dear, they're dead. Oh. Yeah, we'll be dead shortly. Oh, that was so bad. That's terrible news. You are defeated. All right, Lieutenants, come back up. You are defeated. All right. Who said come off the hill? How do you think they did? We mean starting off outnumbering the enemy and, and having every advantage and ending up massacred. I, it was it was kind of sad, really. <laughs> yeah, but they did. But they had they had. Moment. I mean, they could have won at one stage. Oh yeah. Because Caesar didn't behave as he did on the day, and they really had an opportunity to get round Caesar's left flank mm. and get because he didn't hug the river like he did on the day and, and, and guard that flank. Yeah. Mm. That and because you managed to get Caesar to fight away from the river. And because you had this mass of cavalry that you could have enveloped one side or the other or both, uh, there was an opportunity there. So you, you, you did have an opportunity. It, it, it did slip through your fingers. What Caesar does in this battle is take the initiative and force the enemy, force Pompey, force you guys to react to him. Yeah. And Caesar played you guys like a fish. He was like a fisherman hauling in, pulling on the rod, and you guys would kind of go after the bait. Yeah. Well, why'd you guys fight? Serious question. Why'd you come down off the hill? Well, you know, that's what they're trained for, the fancy the fight, didn't they? I think it was panicking, wasn't it? Yeah, I think, I think it, was it was panicking, yeah. Something else we saw, and I thought it was very interesting. Ollie says at the beginning that, that women's spatial orientation, tactical nows, aren't going to do that well. <laughs> you want to achieve a, a three-to-one local superiority uh, to, to magnify the effect of your greater numbers. I loved hearing that. You talk the talk, yeah. but do you walk the walk? You don't. Well, you know, I'm, I'm talking the talk, and, and these guys are walking the walk. So, uh, it's, you a know. Poor, well, it's a poor craftsman. And that's another point. Neither of the generals empowered their lieutenants. They were not permitted to get on and fight their own corners of the battlefield. Mm. Instead, they were being micromanaged not n not by by Ruth, but by by Ollie, because Ruth spent a lot of the time isolated behind the map board. Yeah. It just was a delegation and chain of command yeah. thing that went wrong, which you kind of identified yourselves yeah. anyway, haven't you? One of the other big problems was that you allowed the battle to disintegrate into yeah. a lot of small combats, yeah. and in almost every case, Caesar was able to achieve a local superiority against you. Your superiority of numbers would have worked if they would have been more. Concentrated. Concentrated. Yeah. Concentrated, yeah. Would you like to see how it really happened? Yeah. yeah. Now Caesar has got do this eight legions, eight hard legions. Caesar is a thin, brittle, but hard army. What Pompey did was he actually did come off the hill, formed very deep, not long and thin, but compact and deep, and this huge 7,000, 6,500, 7,000 cavalry on their left wing. Caesar saw that concentration. He watched all of those horses move into that one end of the battlefield. He knew because the river was over there that that's where Pompey was going to come from. So Caesar strips out part of each legion, strips one cohort out of each legion, and sticks them behind his right flank here. But he doesn't want Pompey to see him, so he hides them behind horses. I'll come up. We're coming up a little bit, and we stop. They're just edging together. Caesar sees that Pompey's forces are not moving anymore. Caesar's leaders figure out that Pompey has ordered his people to stand fast. And so Caesar orders a charge, and you saw this during the game. He orders a charge, then they stop, they catch their breath, they reform, and then Caesar sends his legions in a very focused strike against Pompey's legions. Which Pompey's legions can take, because they're deep. He's got more men, and he's got them in debt, so he can absorb it, he can take it, but it's a bitter fight going on now. And then while that fight's going on... Pompey's cavalry comes driving in not realizing that they're coming in, coming in against an infantry force hiding behind Caesar's cavalry. So Caesar's in. cavalry is pushed out of the way. Pompey's cavalry is forced to fight against infantry. Once those guys are no longer part of the battle, 
Caesar can decide the combat in this meat grinder by taking his last tactical reserve and throwing them in against Pompey. In the real Battle of Pharsalus, Pompey survived and fled to Egypt, where he was murdered. Caesar's military successes and political shrewdness signaled the end of the Roman Republic. When he finally had himself appointed dictator for life, Caesar had become the single most powerful man in the Western world. I think on the plus side, you've learned a little about a battle from history and a little bit about how battles work generally. On the downside, you were responsible for the massacre of 56,000 people. Thanks for playing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank Time Commandos play again tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. This holiday season, be like Steve McQueen and escape in front of the telly for the best in British television, plus your messages and amazing stories throughout the holidays. That's here on UKTV. Coming up next, People's Century.